and subdued trade today, um, you know, a loss of over 33 points. This has been the story for much of early 2011 in Kenya. What do you attribute it to? Um, okay, I wouldn't say for actually early of 2011 because um, I think in the first two to three weeks we saw, two, the first two weeks of January we saw quite a rally, um, maybe the January effect, but um, this, this was expected, it's actually begun slowing down. Um, like today we saw KPLC actually began to drop, um, closed up I think 23.75. And um, also, but we've also seen foreign investors actually being more cautious now and um, taking a hands-off approach. They're not so active over the, they've not been so active over the past uh, two weeks. Okay, the gainers today though, let's talk about those. National Insurance Corporation, Barclays, Atsi River, uh, Night and Fire Industries. What's driving those counters? Um, basically, I'd, I'd attribute this to local players. Um, most foreigners stayed out mostly, except on the usual counters such as Safaricom. So local players were looking at, at good counters, basically speculation. All right, Mumias has delivered their financials and earnings for the period ending 31st December 2010. Suggests a 21% year-on-year decline in profits after tax. Now. You know, many have been looking at the agro stocks in Kenya. They've done really well in the last quarter of last year. What are the problems at Mumias? Um, Mumias attributed um, this mostly to the weather. Um, as we know, sugarcane needs specific weather, rain for a certain time and um, a dry period. But um, Kenya witnessed quite a lot of rain um, in the second half of uh, 2010. And this didn't let up until late in December. So this really affected the, the, the sugar crop. I mean, you would say that the competitive advantage that Mumias has, other than being a, an agro exporter, particularly of sugar, is that they've also moved into the alternative energy space. And given the hunger and demand for uh, new sources of electricity in Kenya, this should be a, a big boost for the company. Why is it not paying off? Um, I, th I mean, they, they, it's, it's fairly new. Um, we expect it will pay off. The ethanol production is growing every day. And also, as you said, um, the need for energy in the Kenyan market as the economy expands keeps growing. So I think it will pay off within, it's a long term project. So within the next, what, we can be looking at mm -hmm. next two to three years. Okay, and opportunities for this company and other sugar refiners, for instance, with the government announcing plans to divest from its investments in um, the sugar industry, does that provide opportunity for growth acquisitions and growth for a company like Mumias and others? Yes, it actually does. It gives opportunity for strategic investors to come in with um, new ideas and more capital injection. So it does pro provide opportunities for growth in those stocks. Let's talk about the inflation figures that have come out earlier today. Inflation or CPI ticking up 5.4%. Now, this raises a, a question because there's a bit of a discrepancy. Late last week, we saw the CBK make its decision on interest rates. The decision was to cut. Inflation figures come up and you'd, uh, you know, you'd believe that with that sort of uh, outlook, the decision would either have been to keep rates on hold or to start hiking rates, as is the case in Nigeria. Um, we didn't really expect them to hike rates, we expected them maybe to hold rates steady. But um, the rise in inflation was expected and I think MPC um, actually took this into uh, under advice because um, what we're seeing is um, short-run inflation rising, mostly because of um, cost push factors. Um, the ri we've seen the rise in food, there's, there's currently a drought in the country, um, rising energy costs. So this, this is expected in the short run. But um, going towards the mid, mid to end of the second quarter of the year, we expect inflation to level off maybe around levels of 4, 3 to mm. 3.5 to 4 percent. I mean, obviously, the reaction, if any, on the bond markets to the inflation figures and the fact that there's been a rate cut and compounding the fact is uh, this trend we're seeing with the Egyptian crisis of a sell-off of emerging market bonds. Is it uh, playing itself out in Kenya? Um, okay, basically, with, with the cut in the CBR and the rise in inflation, um, which, is a, which was a bit contradictory, um, a lot of market players have been asking questions. But um, the Egyptian crisis has not really had an effect on the Kenyan market. In fact, um, during the recently concluded primary auction, we saw a lot of foreign participation. And, but um, I think CBR has, has always been more of a signaling 
factor for the Central Bank of Kenya. It doesn't have any direct effect in the market. Mm -hmm. And what it signaled is that um, the Central Bank wants to keep a loose monetary policy going mm -hmm. forward, um, allow the market to be liquid, and they want to keep mm -hmm. level, uh, rates at low levels. Oh. And also, they're still encouraging um, the commercial lending rates to come down. Okay, and very briefly, any reaction to the IMF loan of $509 million uh, to Kenya to help them uh, shore up reserves is what the IMF calls it bluntly. Um, the CBK calls it uh, support for balance of payments. Uh, but has it had any bearing on the shilling? Because we have seen the, the central bank coming in to try to defend the shilling a little bit. Will that ease that sort of pressure? Um, okay, it didn't have the, uh, an effect on the shilling particularly today. We might see um, some going, um, going forward from tomorrow. And of course, we expect the CBK to come in, le much, to come in less um, into the market to pick up dollars and euros.